Hi there everyone and welcome to another Paul Notes game by Paul Morphy. So as you can see Paul Morphy surrendered his F-Pawn as the player who is playing with the black pieces. So Paul Morphy's opponent is Francis Charles Deving. And you know Francis Charles Deving was the chocolate entrepreneur and I'm a big, very big chocolate fan. So this game was played in Paris in 1858. And the wealthy chocolate entrepreneur, Francis Charles Deving, starts the game with playing e4, e6 by Paul Morphy, d4, c5, d5, d6, c4, g6, knight to c3, bishop to g7, bishop to d3, knight to a6, Deving played a3, and then knight to h6 by Paul Morphy. And did you see how Paul Morphy put his knights on the corner of the board. Moving the knights on the corners is not a very good choice. But in this game, Paul Morphy is playing with the pawn nodes. So it's normal for us to see how Paul Morphy plays some unusual moves in this game. So knight to h6. And you know, Paul Morphy doesn't have a very comfortable position, no matter how strong he is. So he is playing with the pawn nodes and the f pawn is especially strategically a very important pawn. So knight g to e2 and both players castled. Paul Morphy captured the pawn, e takes on d5. Pawn takes pawn, knight to g4. h3 kicking the knight to somewhere else. Paul Morphy played knight to e5. f4 again attacking the knight. Paul Morphy captured the bishop queen takes on d3. Bishop to f5 attacking the queen, queen to f3, queen to b6, and g4, bishop to c2, and then knight to b5, rook from a to e8, bishop to e3, bishop to d3, well the knight is pinned, so b3, well in this position, probably, Francis Charles Deving made a blunder, well as you can see the black square bishop is attacking the rook, but Paul Morphy didn't capture the rook, and he played, actually, a stronger move than capturing the rook. Well, Paul Morphy simply captured the knight with the bishop, and what else? Francis Charles Deving captured the bishop with the queen, and then bishop to d4 by Paul Morphy, and the bishop is pinned. So if moving the bishop, rook takes queen. That's why Deving played rook to f3, and only now, Paul Morphy captured the rook. Bishop takes on a1. And Paul Morphy has the whole rook in this position, and Deving is losing the advantage. But he didn't resign, and the game continued. We have queen to d3, knight to c7, f5, knight takes knight, c takes on b5. And after this move, Paul Morphy played a move. And the wealthy chocolate entrepreneur resigned on the spot. So can you guess the next move of Paul Morphy? What would you do in this position? And if you're ready, Paul Morphy sacrificed the exchange. Rook takes on e3. And Francis Deving resigned. So let me show you the possible continuation. Well, in this position, there is different two scenarios. So if rook takes rook, then c4, attacking the queen, and pinning the rook with the queen. So if b takes on c4, the obvious move, then rook to e8, intensifying the pressure on the rook. So the rook is not going anywhere. I'm pinning the rook, and then rook takes rook. And this is losing for white. And according to the chess engine, there is force checkmate in 12 moves. And obviously the other possible continuation is queen takes on e3, but then bishop to d4, pinning the queen, and winning the queen. So, let me show you the moves. Bishop takes on f2, and white needs to resign. So this is why, after Paul Morphy captured on e3, sacrificing the exchange, Deving didn't even capture the rook, and he resigned. What a sad game for Deving.
And maybe after the game over, he ate a chocolate. So you know, the chocolate is magic. It makes you forget about the difficulties and the unhappiness that you are facing in life. So anyway, this is the last position of this game. And I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. And I hope to see you next time. Take care.